Hello everyone, this is Matt the Speedstar, aka the Game of Rebel, and to close off the month of June, we are going to take a look at Quincy's database. And that'll really be the end of this Let's Play. Like, if you want to if you want to skip ahead to where each individual thing is, you can. I'll try and put some timestamps down there, but I'm probably gonna forget. But while I am doing this, I'm gonna be giving you guys a bit of more in-depth review of the game because I wasn't really able to during the finale. I mean, like, I kind of had to rush that one. But, while I'm giving my in-depth review, I'm also gonna bring up a concern of mine considering how Sega seems to be handling Sonic given the Twitch stream they had before the month of June began. Now, in order for Quincy's database to be fully unlocked, you need to get a combined total of 25,000 rings for the file that you're playing in. I don't have that in my Let's Play file of, yeah, file one right there, but in file two, which is my practice file, as well as my file for getting all the stuff, I do have 25,000 rings, and I will use that one to show off Quincy's database, because why not? Now for Quincy's database, uh, you have concept arts. You unlock these by getting the rings. I believe... I don't know the exact number, but I think you need to get over 16,000 rings in order to be able to get everything here. I think. I think. Either that or above 18,000. All I know is, if you have over 20,000 rings, you'll have everything here in concept art. Movies, you get these as you play along. These are for the various cutscenes that appear during the gameplay. Music player, rings. All of them are numbered from 1 to 34, and you get the last one by getting the 25,000 rings. And credits are just there. They're always there automatically. But if you looked in the credits during the finale, if you look at one point, when it's displaying a row of four four rows of credits, you'll notice in one of them, there is a credit for sleep deprivation. Yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't put in pa I would not put it past uh, developers to be sleep deprived while working on these, because you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in these. And I mean a lot of stuff going on with these games, because, you know, the way technology is, and I'm just rambling at this point. Anyway, one last thing, and it's about the shiny hunt. Now, I have mentioned that there is no reward for getting it, but if you guys would still like to see it, please, send me a comment, send me comments if you want to see it or not, and if I see that enough people want me to, I will see about doing it while I handle my other LPs. And I'll just upload it along with them. Okay, so, for my more in-depth review for Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, the things I touched on during the credits, the controls, and how the game is, how the game handles itself. Now, what I mean by the game handles itself very well, despite its issues. Yes, I know it's not very polished, it, it, it's almost not polished at all, it's still got quite a few bugs, but there's nothing big or game-breaking about it, it's like, and I'm talking in a negative sense, like, soft-locking or in a way that will, uh, make it so you can't play the game anymore. Like, either game crashing or something that hard-locks and forces you to restart the game. It has nothing like that. And dis despite the frame rate and how it can be thanks to the cry engine i still think that the game held up pretty well as for the controls like i did say the con the controls are like a dream because a lot of modern sonic games most likely the ones after roger craig smith took over the voice as sonic those ones have had some pretty loose controls or controls that were way too sensitive, in a way. This game has almost perfect control, with some exceptions, one of which being hydro-dashing. I mean, hydro-dashing is pretty cool, and 
if you're just using it for the story stuff, then you have no problems with Hydro Dashing. But if you're doing stuff like these side quests and trying to get around, you may have some issues with uh, tight turns, and that's the that's one of the problems. Plus, you can't you you can only move forward. You have to either turn around using the camera, using the camera, or yeah, you have to find some other way to make those tight turns. As for the uh, vehicles, the Riptide and Angler Submarine. The Riptide was pretty alright, and uh, its gimmick, while it may seem unusual, is pretty easy to get the hang of. Although I kind of wish they allowed more usage of Tails and Amy's weapons, because while they should have better usage, they honestly don't hold a candle to Sonic's Water Cannon. Even though it's the weakest, it can pretty much get everything on its own. As for the Angler Submarine, I cannot really say too much about it because I am bad at those types of things. I I just can't work a game where I have limited uh, movement of my reticle. I can't work those type of shooters. That's why I don't play Star Fox. Now, as for the mechanics, the mechanics for each character, I, I really like that they try to give each character their own different kinds of mechanics in that, but... They made those mechanics a bit, and I mean like, like really, really situational. Like you need a proper trigger for almost every single ability that you can do as each character. With some exceptions, one of them being Tails' ability to fly, you can do that anywhere. There is a mechanic for that too, being the Tails' vent, but uh, as for Tails' ability to fly, that is a natural one, you can use it any time. But a lot of the other ones have to have a type of trigger in order to be able to properly use them. Now, for the designs for the characters and the worlds... How would I put it? Well, as you see here with Sonic, I, I've i gotten a good look at it, and this is probably going to cause a lot of hate to come my way, but uh, I personally like this one. I like how Sonic's designed here. And... This is gonna generate even more hate, but I kind of like how his... I do like that his arms are blue, because... Comparing Boom Sonic to Main Sonic... Main Sonic's arms are bare. And given that... Main Sonic practically has no shoulders, it's almost like... It's almost like putting... Arms on a toy. That's kind of... How it looks to me now, I'm kind of... Getting a look at uh, my Sonic Amiibo along with my, along with the picture here, just comparing them, and yeah, looking at Sonic, Boom Sonic, and how his arms are as well as his body, it actually does look like his arms are more of a part of his body. They have a better flow into them. Plus, you know, I also like the uh, neckerchief. I wish I could call it a scarf, but uh, I don't think I can. I don't think I can get away with it. Because, you know, I love scarves. Anyways, for the other characters, uh, Nail... <sighs> Tails. I definitely like his. His is my favorite out of all the redesigns. Knuckles. Big bodybuilder, so... Yeah, it's to complement the fact that he's the power type. But, uh... I guess I can understand where people come off of his design and the fact that they decide to make him uh, dumb as a sack of bricks. I kind of wish they didn't go with that stereotype, though. But, you know, it's not... It's more, uh... It's more emphasized on in the cartoon, though. Amy's... I like... I like hers. And sorry, guys, but there's no panty shots coming from her anymore. At least not boom, Amy. I don't know about regular Amy. But, uh, yeah. And, of course, other characters... I... I, I don't mind them. I definitely don't. But... One thing I definitely love that they did for this game is they tried to make a more fleshed out world for Sonic. You, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? You have like this actual world around here. It's almost more based off of the formula they used for Sonic Adventure and Sonic Next Gen. I call it Next Gen because I think that sounds... I like how that sounds, okay? But yeah, I like that they did try and go for that and... I know, given that the game's unpolished and that, it probably doesn't look like it's working out too well, but honestly, I'm glad they did that. Not only because 
I I'm pretty alright with that style, because it gives you a bit of, uh, being able to roam. And it's not just move from one stage to the next. But, it also helps flesh out the world more, because there's also characters introduced, such as, uh, Cliff. Cliff and Percy. As some examples. And I definitely love that they tried to go for that, and I really hope they continue to do that for future Sonic games. That's one thing I hope Sega does. Sega, Sonic Team, or another company that's working on a Sonic game if they ever do that. Which, uh, given how things have been with Sega, they probably won't. But I really like that they tried to do it, and... I, I gotta give props to Big Red Button for making this attempt. I know it didn't turn out as well as you guys had hoped, but you guys gave it a really good attempt. So, all in all, I will give this game, at best, a 6 out of 10. Now, my thing with Sega, and this is the, the Twitch stream that they did back in... I don't know when it was exactly. Was it May or was it April? I don't remember, but... What I gotta say here is, I am concerned with the direction they are going to take Sonic now. Given how things have been with the franchise as well as the fan base, And it worries me because I've seen various sources and... All of them are different. Like... There's some that say they want to take Sonic back to his glory days. Or they want to do something entirely new with Sonic, like, or make a new Sonic entirely. And this is what worries me, because they're all different, but it also worries me as to how each of, each of those different opinions is going to take the franchise. One of my main concerns is... How do I put it? Sonic pulling a Mega Man. And by that, I mean... Sega and Sonic Team going for a possible Sonic the Hedgehog 5. Because I've seen what Sonic 4 was like, and for Sonic 4, they tried to make it way, way too much like the Genesis games. And I mean like way too much to the point where the music almost sounded like it came from the Genesis, kind of mixed up with some more uh, modern elements. It's not that it's that bad, but I really think that was not the right direction to go with that. And I really hope they don't try to go for a Sonic 5, because if they do, then they're just gonna be using a stale old formula and trying to add some more bells and whistles onto it. Something that I really think they should not do anymore. Come on, it's... It's 2016. Almost 2017 at this point. Okay, maybe not almost, but we're almost... We're getting there. But regardless... We have much better tech now. We can make games of a much higher quality. And we don't have to just reuse the same formula over and over and over again, because then it gets stale, and then people are going to complain about that. But another thing is, if they're going to take Sonic in a new direction, what new direction are they going to take him in? There's, a, there's so many possibilities. But I'm worried about what they're going to go for, because... If they go for something entirely new, some... I, I just don't know. I just really don't know how they're going to handle it. And that worries me because what I'm worried about is they're going to kind of do what they did with the, with the modern games and just make things a bit more simplified but with an added gimmick. And by added gimmick, I mean like uh, do something that uh, is just like added in there, instead of just, like, making it, like, it, I mean, like, making it a main gimmick, or, uh, okay, that's coming out weird, but what I'm saying is, I don't want them to just make another Sonic game where it's just Sonic, and you're, it's just, it, it mainly focuses on only Sonic, because I really like that they tried to have the other characters playable, and I, I'm really glad they did that. But I don't want them to disregard the other characters as well. Especially ones that have only, like, appeared in, like, one game. Like, there's Marine, um, Silver, Somewhat. 
um, the Chaotix. And this is just a, this is just a, a false, this is just a personal hope for me, Elise. Yeah, I like her, okay? I really think that even though she was only there for like one game and people don't like her, I really think she deserves another chance, okay? Besides, there's hardly any humans in Sonic. I know Egg Eggman's the only one, but there have been others. I mean, remember, we had... Remember the, the story of Sonic 2 in that. <sighs> Not Sonic 2, it's Sonic Adventure 2. Okay, I I'm getting, uh... I'm getting worked up here. But, uh, what I'm trying to say is... I really hope that they don't give up on anything that they've... They... they what I'm trying to say is, I hope they don't give up on Sonic. On Sonic and the rest of the crew. I don't want them to disregard anything. And I want them to try and just... I would love it if Sega would just at least look back to some of their other games. Just put in a lot of thought about how they worked. Their strengths. Their issues and that but not disregard anything they've done for Sonic's franchise. And I mean, like, anything. Even if it's a game that was not received well. Because if they do that, if they don't disregard any of their games and they build upon what they've done in other games for another Sonic game, I really think they could uh, get Sonic going again. Not that he isn't, but uh, you get the idea. To make sure Sonic stays as respect... To just make sure that Sonic stays as a respective icon of gaming. Because one of his games is in the Video Game Hall of Fame, so there's no way he's going away. There is no way. <sighs> I hope I got enough of that out, because I'm kind of worried this is going to take too long. But anyway, that's it. That is essentially it, and, uh, this is just all the stuff here. Like, there's just, just all the cutscene stuff here, and the music player, uh, yeah, they don't have any names for them, they're just tracks. But, anyway, that is it. So, for those of you who, uh, stay to listen, and, uh, explore the concept arts and stuff, thank you all for watching and, uh, listening to my review and my rant, sort of, and, uh, I hope this helps in some way. Help you better understand Sonic and Sonic Boom. And I really hope they continue with Sonic Boom, because uh, I really think it can work. So, that'll be it. And uh, to those of you who stayed to watch my Let's Play of Sonic Boom Prize of Lyric, thank you for watching, and I hope, I hope you enjoyed it.